so you brought up the Catholic Church and the, uh, the rape scandal. Now, I am not a fan of the Catholic Church. Uh, anyone who's watched this channel knows that. Um, however, uh, is that necessarily like a, uh, um, a mark against religion or the organization? Because um, we also have various scandals here in the States and also in the UK, right? Um, of organizations failing to protect um, innocence, right, from predators. We have the... Um, uh, Larry Nasser thing, right, with the um, uh, uh, gymnast, right, the United States uh, gymnast, where they uh, this guy was just, you know, abusing uh, those athletes for years and years. Um, we have, uh, oh, we have a few more, like it, within university settings, actually, of exactly that story repeated. Um, and in um, yeah. the UK, they had the what's the entertainer's name who was a massive child rapist? You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, the Bill Seville. Jimmy Savile. Jimmy, Jimmy Savile, yeah. Um, like, maybe the biggest uh, child predator ever. Like, possibly, right? Um, but, and a lot of people knew. A lot of people knew what he was up to. And and people didn't uh, 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 protect him. He was a big BBC star. And so, uh, they just let him do what he wanted. Um, so, is that necessarily, uh, when we talk about the Catholic Church um, and that abuse, is that necessarily religion? Or is it just organizations uh, protecting uh, the powerful? So uh, my argument, um, I think my argument boils down to religion um, in a organized religion kind of uh, inherently. Um, I think I think I think it pre is I think it's pretty straightforward to say that organized religion results in some people having uh more influ a large amount of influence over a large number of people right and i think that when you have that you kind of it, i think that kind of results in a kind of power dynamic that can easily be abused and the the rape scandal in the catholic church is a good example of that and it's the i think that this is an issue endemic to organized religion not an issue that is unique to organized religion but it is one of the main reasons why i like organized religion okay um so you had a question uh Brittany. we'll go to desperado katie I kind of almost forgot. I think it was something about um. It seems like the only religion that get is a you're able to kind of criticize is Christianity. Um, are you guys the same way about like um, Jews and Muslims and stuff like that? Or because I'm guessing most people here are pretty anti-religion. Or is there anybody here that's not? Well, let me ask you. Do you consider Catholicism Christianity? I'm not a big religious. Because Person 50 years himself. ago, 50, 60 years ago, that would have not been considered the case. So it depends so, on what you're calling. Okay, well, well let's only just... the Protestants, like Catholics, always consider themselves Christians. So okay, but like, all right, in the okay. we can all we can put no, that part aside. But I'm just saying, in general, um, it does seem that they like Christians, well, and white Christians mostly are the ones that you can criticize the most and it's okay. And, and I've been one of those people who, who's done that. So I get it, but why is it not the same for like Muslim? Why can you not criticize Muslims the same way? Well, okay. Okay. So to be clear, um, I'm not only criticizing the Catholic church. It's just like, it's the criticism that's most um, it's the example that's most like directly impactful on my personal life because that's the church that has power where I live, right? Okay. That's just kind of like why I went with that example. I I wasn't I mean, talking about I, you. I wasn't talking about you specifically. I actually didn't hear what you said. Um, <laughs> so I was talking about in uh, general with lefties. Uh, that just seems to be kind of the the case that we are oh, not we i guess anymore but like just <laughs> in general that will be the ones that are going to be targeted it's okay to target and you d you're not able to do the same thing with other religions also i do have another question why is it that um... can we answer you though first yeah sure sure go ahead I'm okay sorry. um Desperado. <laughs> yeah i was i was gonna say I, I would say the reason why christianity was probably used is because I'm I'm guessing 
but the societal experience of pretty much everybody on this panel, they've been exposed more heavily to Christianity than to other religions, and they're probably more well-versed in Christianity specifically rather than other religions, whether it be, uh, what is it, uh, Judaism or what is it, Hinduism or Islam or Buddhism. So I think that's the reason why it's a it's a communally under, understood thing on, on this panel about like the intricacies of Christianity itself. Okay. And that would be the basis by which we all uh, discuss this topic. The truth within a system. Yeah, yes. yeah. And nobody, yeah. nobody, nobody specifically like targeted the white race. You said targeted. I targeted nobody in no, any no, no. of my speech. No, I just no, want to make it clear. No, you said targeted. I targeted no, I'm talking about nobody. lefties in general. Like Lef they... I'm a lefty. I targeted okay. nobody. Okay. I just want to make that clear. Okay, cool. Um, but cool. I'm just saying in general cool. that... Okay. Um, so I'm just saying Are in general... What the hell is happening, man? Do you speak yeah. lefties <laughs> oh my god. Let, let, let Brittany respond, please. <laughs> so I'm saying that in general, that seems to be the case where it's like lefties are able to... It's They feel comfortable, maybe. Uh, going it, after white Christians. Is it the case? Because you said so? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it didn't no, happen all night. You said so. I just got case. here. I don't know no what you guys are here. doing, but like no talking about what want. you guys are talking about specifically doesn't really... Um, it's not... It's irrelevant because we can, that just seems to be the case across the board with um, a majority of lefties. Maybe you guys not no, specifically. Do you have stats to prove that? We, we did talk about, oh, we we did talk about Taoism that. and Nobody Buddhism. Yeah, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's studies on this. Nobody made it about race. <laughs> I'm sure there's, let me get, race. let me pull up my study board. There's no race. That's a bland list based <laughs> on right. Okay, Des, Des, Desperado, did you? Reality. Uh, yeah, did, I said you... we, we, yeah, I said we did talk about Taoism, Hinduism, and Shintoism uh, earlier before you'd come on, Brittany. But, um... Uh, okay. What I was what I was going to say is, and th this is more of a question to the panel based on the topic of what's going on here. Is there anything that you personally think that is not attributable to you that you could see, and even from a religious sense, where your religion is, says that this is definitely not something prescribed to do in your life, that you could see voting in essence for not necessarily for yourself but for other people and by doing so making society better Wait, are you Bro, i'm gonna me? just ask could you could you wrap it up in like in like a, a five second question because i, I want to answer basically I... if if your if if your version of religion prescribes that gay people are not allowed to get married and whatnot okay. and you cast your vote for gay marriage, is that something you can reconcile with, even though you yourself will not have a what is it a gay a gay wedding or a gay marriage itself? Absolutely. Due, the way that due people to, due to the fact that that would in essence help society reach equality or equity. Absolutely. You see this all the time. The ways that people vote are very complicated uh, and have a lot of different factors. People are regularly going to vote tactically, uh, what might not be their most ideal vote, and they're regularly going to compromise on some issues to prioritize other ones. Uh, this is a big source of uh, sort of conflict within the American political system right now. As we see, there are lots of issues where, for example, a majority of people might feel very strongly about one particular issue, but the people that are opposed to it are willing to vote for that over anything else. This is, for example, you see on gun rights. You know, when gun rights are on the board, you're not going to get as much of a turnout from people that support gun rights. But when gun rights uh, are, excuse me, that support gun uh, restrictions. But when gun restrictions are on the table, there are a ton of people that are very anti-gun restrictions that don't normally vote that will come out of the woodwork. And that's one of the big obstacles getting more uh, gun uh, uh, limitations uh, and gun control in America. So I think it's totally fair uh, and understandable for why people would sometimes prioritize a one policy over another and be willing to compromise on that uh, when they vote. What I was getting at with this is that if if people have the ability to do that, to work outside their ideology for the betterment of society, I think a secular society is more easily achieved. If they cannot reconcile the fact that their religion prescribes something other than what is it, uh, what what would be the betterment of society, I think that would mean that the achievement of a secular society is not easily Next achieved. Next question. 
Do you think okay. that um, living in a country with um, a lot of different religions is a good thing? Yeah. Yeah. You do. So, yeah, but you just said that you think we should be in a secular society. Right. That doesn't. A secular society does not mean it's devoid of religion. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, okay. So you think that we should have religion, but live in a country where? Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, okay. No. The 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 idea that I have is that we live we live in a society in which the rules of the society mm -hmm. benefit benefit everyone and no mm -hmm. one has to abide by specific rules that are prescribed by one or okay. a different group's specific religion okay. there's always going to be a central authority right that's the government that's the country right how does the central yeah. authority decide what benefits everyone the best I what does say the benefit more representation the there is i think the better the choice could be made okay but then think? it comes down to demographics Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I mean, that's the situation as it stands. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, Kitty, did you want to? I, I, I just wanted to answer to the original question. You know, I, I, I don't want to derail the conversation. Go now. for it, Kitty. Um. It's okay. It yeah. happened to me. A lot of <laughs> so, Brittany, I, I think generally speaking, we are in a pretty American-centric space. Like people who are not American in this space are like European at best. We get some people from South America, very few people from the Middle East, very few Asians. Um, and predominantly in America and in Europe, like Christianity is um, the most common religion. And even secular people who aren't, that don't consider themselves uh, to be Christian, they understand more about Christianity than they do other religions. I have given Prime a two-hour lecture about everything I hate about Judaism. I have a lot to say. A lot. I do not like Judaism. At all. Um, You're from and, Israel, right? Yeah. Okay. Are so, you Jewish? Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, this is not, okay, let, let me just like put this out. I'm, I'm half Jewish, so it's not, I'm not being anti-Semitic, but I'm asking no, this. No, 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 it's just when people ask that question, I guess my question is define Jewish and then it's like a whole rabbit hole yeah. we have to go into, I, I you know? I do have actually another question. Why is it that like, okay, Jews are considered a race, but Muslims are not? Okay. What is that? You know, about? that's an excellent question. Okay. Let's discuss yeah. that once I'm done answering like the okay. original okay. question. Sure. So, um, first of all, I, I did note we were talking about Christians, but generally what people use, they say Christianity. So saying Jews and saying Muslims is not the same as saying Judaism or Islam, as far as I'm concerned. And I just find that like using Christianity is just the easiest because you, you let anyone here speak on uh, Judaism or Islam. And uh, if you have anyone that knows anything about those religions, they'll just be here dismantling every single point because just generally Europeans and Americans are pretty ignorant in terms of like other religions that aren't Christianity. Which is fine. I know not a lot about like Asian uh, religions, like Buddhism or like when people brought up Taoism, I'm like, why well, I can't participate in this? I know absolutely nothing. And this is pointless. So Christianity is just an easy way. I just see it as like a, a valid, easy template to use about everything I hate about generally uh, religion wise, you know. Um, but yeah, I just think it's the easiest and that's why people do it. So what about my question about um, why I'm Jews are considered a race, but Muslims are not. So all, all you have to say is there is no God but God and Muhammad is his messenger. Boom, you're a Muslim, <laughs> if you believe it. Inshallah. However, Inshallah. Judaism has tend to be hereditary. Like a lot of more modern religions allow you to just sort of join whenever you want to declare you that you want Muslim to join. Muslim is a modern religion? Is, Relatively is it? speaking, yeah. Isn't it like, wait, what? No, that can't I be I mean, right. compare it to Judaism, compare it to Christianity, um, compare it to Hinduism, much older. How, how old is the Muslim religion? Can anybody in chat um, answer that? I actually years, don't know. Roughly how many? 1,400 years. Roughly 14. 1,400 years. Really? Okay. Um, and that is kind of new. I, yeah. That doesn't seem very new, but... Um, well, name, even name a newer religion, I guess. <laughs> how, how, old is, um, how old is Judaism? Like, Scientology. What Judaism's uh, Judaism like 3,000 plus, right? 3,000, and, and Christianity? What, 2,000 plus? Around 2,000, yeah. Jesus. So, I mean, they're not, they're not that far off, all of them. I mean, I wouldn't call, I mean, like... That's like double. 
And how the hell do you guys know these numbers off your top? And like of head, Hind like? Hinduism is more <laughs> like, than four thousand years old. Do you not remember the date of Jesus Christ? I I, 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 I literally know like really like very little about religion to be honest. Our Lord um, is Savior. Everyone um, that is really smart. <laughs> But I do think it's interesting because, you know, when people talk about Muslims and they, uh, you know, they call like act like it's like a race and then people are quick to snap back about how it's not. But Jews are technically considered. Um, so if I were to engage with this and uh, this might open a really big can of water. Um, there is a confusion when talking about um, Jewish people and Judaism as a religion, right? It's often conflated and it causes a lot of issues because there are a lot of people who identify as ethnically Jewish. Um, and when people say Jewish, they might mean religiously Jewish and they might mean ethnically Jewish. And people just think those things overlap, but they don't have to. Um, honestly, I find the discussion of Jewish people as a race or as an ethnic group to be kind of pointless and has proven in history to cause a lot of harm to Jewish people. I think a uh, discussion of Judaism should be relegated to um, if you are religiously Jewish. So when people say Jews in general, it's kind of confusing to me because I don't know what they mean because Jews can be anything from religiously Jewish to culturally Jewish, like a lot of Americans I, are. So. I agree with you on that. Like I didn't realize, okay, so I, cause like, again, I um, am half Jewish and I didn't even know until I started you know, some more of the white nationalists that it was actually, okay, you are going to be born that way, whether, whether it is or not. I always felt it was, um, you know, a religion and a choice. So for me, I never identified as Jewish because I didn't um, identify with the religious factor of it. Exactly. But because I am technically, um, I was born that way, then I am. And it, they, a lot of them say that, you know, there's no like escaping that type of thing. Yeah, but, I, I agree um, with you. And that's why when people ask me if I'm Jewish, I'm kind of stuck because I'm not religiously Jewish. And when I, I had a period, Jewish. well, um, like your parents? I, see, I, I really resent that question. I, um, why? Why, why do you resent that question? Because I think looking into uh, the bl my blood um, as a way to determine what I am is just not something I'm very comfortable with. But people tend to do that. And then, like with Jewish people, just to expand on what Richard said, um, a, a big difference between Judaism and other, um, like both, Islam and Christianity is that both Islam and Christianity do want people to convert. They want to expand, they want to grow. And people just assume that that's how Judaism works. And it's not really, there's a big factor. And again, this is complicated because some Jewish people, reformists would say that this isn't true. So it depends on what version of Judaism you follow, right? But generally speaking, at least where I come from, there is this aspect of is your mother Jewish? So there is this component that you must be born Jewish to be Jewish. Um, and that is a concept I am personally uncomfortable. That just sounds like blood purity. What, what about it makes you uncomfortable though? I don't get that part. Why are you uncomfortable? Why am I uncomfortable with it? Yeah, why does that make you uncomfortable? It sounds very blood purity like, to me. Katie like, is are you emergence. ashamed of it she or something? Not or what's happening some here? Of her parts. She is an emergence. I'm okay. not... I'm not ashamed of it. I just don't think that's a very good thing for people to follow. You know? Like, you don't think it's a good thing to follow if you are born Jewish? You think it should be more of a religion then? Take care, well, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. See you. So, part of um, most, most people who practice Judaism would require this element that you must be born Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, or a lot of them. I think that's cringe as fuck, and it's one of my main issues with Judaism. I think that's bad. That's just racist shit, you know? Is it racist? Ugh. How is it racist? Um, I think, you know, there's something very beautiful about Christianity and Islam, because you can just convert and join. And now you're a Christian, and you're a believer, and you're part of the group. Um, in Judaism, though, there's a, a qualifier, and it depends on what your blood is. And that just sounds like Nazi stuff to me, you know? <laughs> so I don't still don't get how it's Nazi stuff. Like, I mean, this is like the Jewish religion. It's not like the Nazis were the ones who decided that. Yeah, right? I always say that the difference between what Judaism is and like Nazism is that Nazis said Jews were really, really bad. And Jews say that Jews are the best. 
Um, but in terms of the blood purity element, it seems to go both ways. You, you are know? a little anti-Jewish, aren't you? Okay. What's anti-Jewish? Um, Anti-Judaism. Anti anti I'm not into religion. And I'm okay, definitely so not into um, racist religions. I don't like that. It's what, which religions are racist? Judaism. So is that the most racist religion, you think? I don't know all religions, but it's pretty racist. I think it's a pretty racist religion. What's the scale racism? Okay. Hey, girl. Hmm. I think the Nazi might like you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they would like me because they perceive me know. as Jewish because of my Jewish blood. So I don't think yeah, they'll have me. Yeah, but you're me. saying some things that they might like, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure Nazism is pretty much uh, like not how that works. That's kind of the beautiful thing about racism. You can't escape it no matter what your opinions is because it's about the composition of your blood or your skin or whatever. You could be a token. <laughs> I mean, they can try. Just make sure you get a lot of money out of them when you're doing it. Yeah, also, like, being critical of, People in the chat saying, wait, based. Like, being being critical of Judaism doesn't make you a Nazi, by the way. Like, it's such a silly thing Being critical of Judaism? Who's saying that? You're really quiet, by the way. Being critical of Judaism doesn't make you a Nazi. Like, you're right, it doesn't. I agree, it does not. she's saying? She's saying, I don't like Judaism, right? I think it's, like, a bad But how come, like, certain people, if they're critical of Judaism, it does make you a Nazi, but if... Other people do it, it's not. Because she's critical of Judaism because she believes, like, the things they believe are wrong. Other people are critical right. of Judaism because they believe that, like, God ordains them to be, like, devil no. people or, like, monsters or, like, their blood That's not true. Pure. No, I think like, some people um, are critical of it because people. they think it's wrong, too. They think some of the things are wrong as well. Fine, um, okay. So that. this is why I made the distinction. A lot of people are not critical of Judaism. They're critical of Jews. And um, the problem is that once you assert Jew being a Jew has to do with your blood, then that complicates things. I'm critical of Judaism. That is like not the, the same of the as religion. the religion. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're allowed to you're allowed to like be critical of religions without being like a like a Nazi or something. Well, it's it's again it's it's very emblematic to how like in discourse, especially in these spaces, um, Jew just means a lot of things and when we don't separate these terms and we don't understand the difference between these terms and yeah. a lot of jewish people don't yeah. then it creates a lot of issues no, uh, it's the same with I'm, criticizing israel I think I'm, sim issue. I'm in a similar boat as you actually i think um where i'm born that way but like i'm not i don't support the uh, religious aspect of it so i i do um agree with what you're saying in that sense um and i do think that there are times where people are critical of it though in general and um it they <laughs> maybe i don't know like it just seems like you're not allowed to say anything bad about well, jews yeah like pe people will tend to why? jump down your throat with those kind of things but that's because yeah, you can't why, see what's you can't see what's going on inside someone's head you don't know what their intentions are when they start criticizing yeah. israel so like if, if if their intentions are good then obviously we should be okay with that however mm -hmm. a, such a significant percentage of the intentions are bad that now a lot of people are a bit twitchy when they hear a lot of these red flags coming up of like well i also think that it depends like, how it starts to get a little bit i also think it depends on the criticism right if somebody says a lot of jews are bankers then i'm going to ask them, do you mean like a lot of religious jewish people are and they don't mean that they mean people who are ethnically jewish and i think saying that is um interesting and questionable because usually people would say that it's um, true okay <laughs> it is the thing is it happens a lot in debates people will say something that might be true but we don't say things for no reason we say things because we're either trying to imply something or we're trying to construct a narrative so i can say 1350 and that might be true but usually people say it because they're now going to advocate for certain policies. This to is just a problem, throw though. Out... This is what a problem. Is a problem? If because if you can't even say things that are true because of how it's going to um, make people, I don't know, feel or it's going to make people uncomfortable, um, what the hell are we doing? No, Why no, no. I'm not saying, I'm, Brittany, I'm not saying that you can't say things that are true. I'm saying that I'm going to ask you what is your point in yeah, saying yeah, that? Yeah, and yeah, usually but... a lot of the times in discourse, discourse has become so explosive that people will say something and that's what we mean by dog whistles, right? Someone will say something that is true and people will jump on them because they know what they just said is usually used to push 
for certain things, right? So I can use, I can say 1350. And what I'm going to say next is, I think black people should um, like rise up because they're already doing so much crime that like they're halfway there, they should uh, overtake the United States and build their own like sovereign nation. You know, I, they're, they're, they're so good with crime, they must like be really, they, it would, wouldn't be a stretch for them to do that, right? But that's not usually what people are going to say when they say 1350. Yeah. You can't, you can't just like profess yourself as like some sort of like truth speaker, but not expect to see people to. Why are you see so the quiet? Is it, it maybe his volume? Let me check you on. Uh, yeah, right click on the turn off. No, he's just very quiet. It was it's very. Quiet for you Thank you for calling him out. Like a, real close to the mic, right? Very right, intimate. Oh, okay. your tongue is right <laughs> in my ear. ASMR, oh, yeah. dude. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so like you, you can you can't just like profess yourself to be some sort of truth speaker and not expect people to see the implications in the things you say much like katie says right you can say 1350 and that might be true of like one month in 2016 or whatever it might be technically a, a true statement mm -hmm. right but what you really mean when you say that is not 1350 what do what you, you mean really when mean you there, say 1350 there. it comes with a connotation right and these connotations are sort of adapted societally right so like when you say like oh yeah the bankers are all jews Right, uh -huh. you're, not, you're not actually like talking about the ethnicity of like people who run the finance industry, right? You're, you're like prodding at some sort of conspiracy about like like the Jews what, trying to take over the planet. Right. What What about when people talk about like oh lefties for sure talk about you know how the media is controlled by you know a few people or um, things like that? They usually it seems like the left and the right kind of have the same. Um, criticism of certain things but they just name them a little bit differently uh the left exactly. will they'll Unless... the left will call them billionaires which is probably smarter than the what the right is billionaires doing. are not and... an ethnic yeah yeah i know i got that thank you um <laughs> <laughs> no thank i'm you. saying thank that you. because it makes a I'm big not... difference Breaking in the critique news, that you're making billionaires <laughs> are an ethnic group everybody <laughs> Woo! Did not oh know God. that yeah. um, again uh, yes no i agree no i agree yeah billionaires aren't an ethnic group got it okay so but like the, <laughs> the left will, will, will point out the fact that um the billionaires are controlling a lot of stuff the right um the far far right will talk about how the fact it is the jews um yes so I the reason why i said I billionaires are an ethnic group like, is because like, if you're going like, to draw an equivalence like, between right. those things it's wait not wait correct wait a second wasn't done wasn't done I, I'm saying I do think it would be smarter and for you guys listening in my chat for the right to stop saying it and to start just maybe picking up on some of these things that the left is saying and just just call them billionaires. Don't don't do it. Just don't do it. We get it. We know. But like it would be smarter. You probably oh, like, like no, we wouldn't be getting. Are you off. just implying okay, so all billionaires are Jews now? No, Katie, Katie's right, right? Um, like, I don't know, like... but there probably are quite a few. No, um, <laughs> not. You're, making, you're making the equivalence, right? You're saying that like worship. you're saying that like prodding at an ethnic Remember, group and up. prodding prodding at an ethnic group and prodding mm -hmm. at someone who's like a, like a group of rich people is equivalent mm -hmm. and these are not equivalent right right they, they, they... right but they're saying the same types of crit like they're they're criticizing in the yeah, same but, way yeah, but, they, but they're just they're, naming they're, them no, different no they're not the yes. the prescriptions exactly. that would come absolutely out of those descriptions are you kidding are yes they are yeah, you're kidding spoon I, is I, correct and you're not listening to him I can no, take I someone's am. money I away and they stop being a billionaire. You guys, I can't I take someone's Jewishness away. I probably know a lot more white nationalists than you all do. And I'm telling you that I hear the exact same things from them that I hear from the far left. They're okay. just saying it in a different way and they're just naming them differently. Right? The Brittany? Yes. If in a different way, they aren't exact, then, are they? Theory. The prescriptions are different, right? So the left would say, right, let's tax billionaires so they're no longer billionaires, right? The far right are going to say, mm -hmm. let's kill the Jews so there are no more billionaires. Hey, hey. <laughs> Not all of them say that, first of all. Okay. All okay. Right. Well, Second of all, hashtag not all Nazis. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm, okay. Kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They would not Only say that in Nazis. my chat, right? That... <laughs> right? Are the like good Nazis? Like, no. okay. like, you guys be good Nazis, okay? That, that <laughs> on the outside, you say Nazi, and then on the inside, it's like saying vanilla, French vanilla, <laughs> vanilla bean, <laughs> Italian vanilla. Not all Nazis. <laughs> Let's go. Vanilla, bourbon Ooh. vanilla. And it's like, bro. I just thought that it was all a bunch of people that didn't <laughs> like different people. Uh, Richard, did you have anything else to say? And then I will go to Katie. Uh, so yeah, sure so it's like an earlier, an earlier point um, Brittany was making about like, well, why can't I just talk about things that are true? Because that would make it harder for me to um, like come to good prescriptions on what we should do. But if I were to just, you know, in this call, just start listing the things that are on my desk, like I can see a 
I can see some batteries, I can see a candle. I could just keep doing that, but it wouldn't be helpful to discourse. It wouldn't help move the conversation forward to something that we can figure out. All those things are true. I'm talking about the truth. Why are you trying to silence me? And eventually, if I kept going on about it, I kept listening to all these things, eventually Prime would have to kick me off the panel because it'd be so annoying. Why, why is this guy just coming in here and talking about all these random objects on his desk? And I, I could then claim, oh, I'm being silenced for the truth. I just want to speak the truth. I'm here. I'm a truth sayer. <laughs> Believe me. I'm not but... sure if that's technically the same. Are thing. they really on your desk, things Richard? on your desk are know. really like, are the... that's not, come on. Come on. Yeah, so it's not a matter the of random things the on my desk. It's a matter of that saying something true is not but sufficient saying, in and of itself for something to be worthy Saying something that's saying. true that might be problematic, though. Yeah, yeah. So in, in, in fact, probably what I'm saying is better because well, at least what I'm saying doesn't lead to any long term harm in our prescriptions. Like I'm, no one's going to get hurt. But if you can't name a listen. problem, you can't fix it. Well, Wait. It's, it's, it's your opinion <laughs> that it is a problem. What Can do you I, mean? When you sure. say 1350 of... and that's a true thing you're saying, that is not a problem. <laughs> that is the true thing that you're saying. You think okay. there's a problem with it, and now that you're going to build on top of that. Saying 1350 by itself is just, it's not, I don't know if it's an actual truth though, but let's pretend for a second that it is, okay? Saying 1350 by itself is not anything. It's just the truth. But usually people want to point at a problem. So when you take a truth and you interpret it, and now it's a problem, and now we're going to discuss solutions, you're not just discussing truth now, you are discussing everything that comes with that truth so for you. How, how can you, okay, so say that, okay, so 1350 is a true statement, and you are trying to find solutions to it, um, how are you going to find solutions to something Wait, if you can't even say what a problem what? is? Solutions 1350. to 1350. If there is, okay, if, there, if that is a true statement, which I think you said that it is a true statement. Let's correct. pretend that it is for the sake okay. of discussion. How how are you going to be able to find anecdotes to that if you can't even name what it is? Okay, Brittany. So okay. 1350 is a true st statement, sure. right? All right. But you're going to say that's a problem, correct? Well, you think that's a problem? Do you not think it's a problem? What? Wait. Saying a true statement is fine. It's just usually when people say true statements, they're saying them to point at a problem, to discuss solutions, to, right. and all of these things are outside of the true statement that you make. So saying 1350 by itself is not a problem. It's just that whenever somebody's saying that, they're trying to say, here's a problem and here's how I'd like to fix it. And, what, though, what and all of that about part. Yes. What are they? What are they saying about how they would like to fix it that you have a problem with? Well, it's, I, it's, I don't know how they want to fix agenda, it myself. Right? So, like that thirteen fifty statistic, it's it's one month in twenty nineteen, right? Why would okay. you choose that one month in twenty nineteen to be the crux of your argument? Right? In twenty nineteen. Yes, that's. I think. I think that's where the statement comes from. Thirteen fifty, right? Um, I don't think so. Well, the point is, it's one month in a year. Why would you choose? It, like, I don't think. That... I don't know if we're talking about the same thing. Thirteen fifty, the crime statistic. Okay, is that was that I... was that found out? That was founded out in like. Uh, yeah, oh, that, like... they're talking about the year that that was founded out. No, thir like... thirteen fifty is in like thirteen percent of uh, fifty percent of crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirteen percent of the population, right? This was like that data was recorded from one month in one year. Right. right. Why, why would you choose to base your argument around one month in one year? Right. Because that is like the because right the implication of that argument. Right. That is the strongest piece of data you could find to support like an argument that is like against black people. Right. Are there other numbers that we've found that like um you know would retract that number? I mean, are there other yeah, statistics? Month to month? Yeah. Drastically. And like. Is that not a big enough sample size? But the, but the point, the point, is, the, the point is, right, you're specifically selecting a piece of data which is very in favor of the opinion that, like, black people should be condemned, right? And, sure, of course, you can draw other conclusions from that piece of data, right? But it's, it's very suspicious that this is, like, the piece of data you've selected given its correlation with the, with the uh, arguments that people usually make surrounding it. See, I want to make a different argument. When somebody says 1350, they would usually, um, usually, and maybe not all. So when I hear 1350, um, I would say, okay, it seems like black people are unproportionately committing more crime. Um, there must be social factors affecting it. So let's try to solve those social factors. 
Other people who say 1350 say black people do more crime. I guess it's genetic. Let's do segregation. And this is a straw man of both arguments. But you see, there are two. You can take a truth and what you choose to do with that truth can have. It, it's not just like one foregone conclusion of where that truth leads. A truth is a truth. Data is data. But you have to interpret data and you have to come up with what you think the problem is. People will have different answers to what the problem is to a single truth. And then solutions also vary. So saying 1350 is usually just used as a shorthand to say black people seem to genetically have a tendency to cause more crime. But I can hear 1350 and be like, hmm, something's up with that. We should explore further, you know? Say so for argument's sake, um, let's just say that that, that um, this was all true. That it is a genetic thing. Let's just pretend it is. Um, and Why? that they just just for just for argument's sake. Okay. Um, if you are say that this is the case, and uh, like, how would you go about solving something like that if it is genetic? I per personally, I wouldn't. Yeah. If it's genetic, that changes nothing in terms of my own argumentation. I know some other leftist people have different views. Like even if race realism was real, all that would tell me is that I need to give more resources to people mm -hmm. um, who have those um, genetic deficiencies because they need to be helped more. That's all it so, means to me. Oh, wait a minute. If it's genetic and you're, okay, yeah, like, I mean, I'm, so we're going to actually be doing on Tuesday, we're going to be having um, a race thrills and red pilling zone type of thing. Um, So okay. we're, we're going to have Sean last kind of uh, go over this because he's like the big race realist dude. Um, But, um, and <laughs> I still have like a lot to learn on this, but I'm just saying like, if this is the case and there's like, I think I'm, I'm don't quote me on this quite yet, but I think it's like what, like. 60 or 40 something like some genetic some environmental and i don't know how many of you guys agree that it is i i think everybody can, can agree that environment definitely plays a role in um how people are going to behave right is there anybody that disagrees with that no probably not okay so if you can agree that it's both environment and genetic but there's a big chunk of it that is genetic that like, no matter what you do, no matter how much money you give them, no matter, uh, like, what kind of scenario there is, that there is not something that you can do to change that, what do you do? Well, you, you can't change their genes, but you can change how that manifests. Yeah, you can that, change how yeah, they act. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the answer is very simple. Like, we can only con if we can only control one of these aspects, you right? gotta we do speak our best louder, to control the aspect. I don't know what's happening. Maybe check your your settings or something, because it's it, it, no, really quiet. I can't hear him. No, he's very quiet. Fine. Yeah, everybody can hear me fine. Right, if we can I don't only control... Think so. If I, well, they just said they could, so maybe you can't <laughs> yeah. hear them either, right? So, I hear everybody else, but you. If, if we if we can control every aspect, like only one of these aspects, right? That's what we do. We control the one aspect that we can control, right? We're not just going to start like dehumanizing people. Um, can I answer, Brittany? Um, so first of all, um, I believe that all humans deserve the same the same rights and i believe that there is no genetic component that i can find in a human being that would warrant me treating them differently than how i would treat another human being not all people agree with me that's my own personal philosophy so even if it says that like uh, black people has a gene that makes them act more violently that would do nothing in terms of what i think we should do with black people Okay, absolutely not. It, I don't give a fuck about how that. you might like if wow, you were if, would it influence like, how you might go into a black neighborhood black though? What? Would I'm it, sorry. Would it would it influence how you are if you went into an all black neighborhood? Would it influence like if I thought we were people, talking about systemically how to handle Yeah, issues. okay, like Is say this for like an individual let's, let's thing. Talk now? About, let's talk about police officers. Um who Why? are okay, they cuz let's just just do it. Um, well, I mean, we already let's did the like, let's minute. talk on, like on, race on. realism is real, well, okay, right? Yeah. We're well, doing like, a lot of uh, let's just well, do it. Hold me down this for a second. So for police officers, their entire job is to only, they really only come in contact with criminals. That's literally their job. So everybody that they come That's in contact with. That's not true. It, but okay. really, so how often do police officers come in contact with non-criminals when that is their job to arrest criminals and to go after them? When they walk day. around. Every day? When they walk okay, When a victim on. calls. You, the people oh, that they are literally <laughs> going to be interacting with the most, the people that they are going to have to um, come in contact with, and uh, oh, the people that they're arresting, the people that they... It's going to be... Statistically, most of the people they will interact with are non-criminals. 
I don't believe that's certain true. areas. It but depends I, on the I area. don't see how you cannot believe that's, believe that's true. true. That's just, your your job is to sense. come. Right. Your job, your entire it's job, is to go after criminals. What are you talking about? Like, no, like the people Police that are going after people are criminals. all the time. That aren't okay, even Brittany, issues, like, I, I don't know what you mean by interact. If you go into a restaurant and there's one criminal in that restaurant, but the restaurant has a hundred people, you're going to interact with ninety nine non criminals. I'm not talking about on their freaking lunch breaks and shit. Come I didn't on. say like, on their lunch break. If you're yeah, going like, into yeah. a restaurant. When you go into a restaurant and they are like, are, those people aren't going to be criminals. When a police it's officer true. is called into a restaurant to handle a situation I'm when there's one criminal in that restaurant, they're so interacting the with a lot of people in that restaurant who are aren't criminals. criminals. It's really not, not complicated. Else. They're not dealing with everybody else. They're not dealing what with everybody else. They're dealing with What do you the mean? Criminals. They're interacting with them. Are we changing the words of what interacting means They're dealing with the criminals. That's who the police Police officers what do you mean are there to with? go at. They are dealing with the criminals. Now, let me finish what I'm trying to say. If those are the people that you are going to be dealing with mostly on a day to day basis, and you see that there is a certain type of person that maybe is committing more crimes than others, it's not the craziest thing in the world that maybe, just maybe, they might become a little bit more jaded, they might become a little bit more cautious around certain people. So when we See, talk about racial profiling and stuff, I do talked think about it's not that, the craziest though. thing that that happens when your entire job is like, Coming in contact with a uh, certain people. Yeah, so what, but what again, that wasn't the topic of the right? panel. That wasn't anything wasn't. anyone talked about, anyone <laughs> said, right? So you're just bringing that up, right? Also, again, we we started this road. We went down with you where we pretended that there are like genetic factors into being black that make you more likely to be a criminal. Okay, that if you want to do the like police people being jaded because they see black faces and black faces commit more crime, that doesn't prove race realism. That doesn't prove shit in terms of genetics. I didn't say it did. Okay, but we started there, right? Okay. Also, nobody here talked about jadedness. That, that wasn't the topic of the conversation. No, All we talked we're about- we're very off topic, obviously. We're very off topic. Yeah, L let's you, go back you, to the topic. You, you dragged <laughs> this way off topic. Let's go what? Let's go with it! It's all good. Yeah, well, I think that... <laughs> well, it's a little suspicious that you tend to drag topics it, in a certain is. direction. What a surprise that, that when Britney <laughs> shows up, you go to racialism. I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, I think actually, I think actually, now that we are here, this is a perfect time to sort of go back over why it is that people are sometimes hesitant when people bring up things, even though those things might be true. Uh, because now that we have been, people would suspect that typically when someone brings up 1350, that they're going to be making some sort of argument about the idea that black people are genetically inferior or genetically more predisposed to crime. And as we've seen, we've gone right there. Obviously, it is just so blatantly true that just because you're bringing up something that is literally true does not mean that it is a good idea to bring it up and doesn't mean that that can't lead you to bad conclusions. All the time, people like to bring up the statistic that I'm sure you'd have a problem with talking about how police officers have way more violent interactions with black people. And a, a, a normal uh, sort of response to that point is to say, oh, but you're leaving out the fact that black people uh, are the more likely to interact with the police in the first place, right? That is a clear example. I'm hoping even from your perspective, you can see just because you're bringing up something that is literally true does not mean that you can't divine anything about their motive or that that can't lead you to bad conclusions. If you're only being presented part of a picture, of course, that can be an inaccurate reading and thus lead you to inaccurate proposals. Also, okay. I would like to grant some charitability. If, if um, I'm... I don't know you very well. I know what people say about you, but I, I, I only interact with you. Right? I don't know. I don't really care. If you, if it matters to you that people would be more um, like patient and willing to hear people out when they say truths, and then you say, what's wrong with saying the truth? And then we end up like saying, oh, just grant me race realism for a second. And just grant me that maybe police officers jadedness, blah, 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 blah. Then it's kind of like, well, we wanted to like, why is saying truth is bad? And it's like, cause usually when people say, hey, why why is everyone jumping at my, th at my throat for this truthful thing that I said? Cause again, we say things with a purpose. Nobody is just saying truths for no reason. We use truths to establish certain narratives, certain ideas, certain advocacies, right? That's just how it is. Yeah, exactly. If you've got like a, a piece of broccoli on your plate and I come off and I'm like, uh... You know, broccoli is the number one choked on, like most choked on vegetable. Yeah, a lot of people die is from broccoli. Is that a true statement? Yes, it is. Yeah, most people. Is it? Uh, 
Yeah, Can we yeah, get a fact people, check in chat, please? More, more people die from a uh, choking on broccoli than they do on like, cabbage. I would like a fact check know. on that one, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like relevant that. whether or not it is hypothetical. Yeah. It is, because we're talking, because we're talking about whether things are no, true or not. No, because then it would just, then the hypothetical would just be, what if you were chewing on the vegetable that is the most likely to be choked yeah, on? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then I say, right. Then you might be a little more careful. Finish your Finish yourself. Finish. Spoon. Finish, And I'm like, yeah, you know cabbage gets choked on weight length. And you know what? And then maybe if it's a true statement, you might be more careful. Come on, Brittany. Brittany, let him finish. Broccoli is very Alright, I got a pee anyway, so I'll be back. Has a higher ecological impact, right? I'm not saying I don't like broccoli, but like it's pretty <laughs> fucking clear that I don't like broccoli, right? And if you say, "Why do you not like broccoli?" Whoa, whoa, whoa! I never said I don't like broccoli. Fuck it, wait, wait, get Why do you from? have to make this about liking? You just think broccoli is genetically inferior know, is, and is harmful to people. Exactly. Why? Like broccoli. We, look I at the love steps. broccoli. I have broccoli friends. Exactly. Like they're my best broccoli I friends. I eat broccoli. Okay? <laughs> I, I eat personally. Broccoli. I Once you broccoli. go broccoli, you'll never go back. Exactly. You know? the, pro the thing about broccoli is that people <laughs> choke on broccoli all the time. And broccoli, it's really bad for the environment. I right? don't hate broccoli. Broccoli is just like, you know, with its culture and the way it's raised and its roots, exactly, it just gets exactly. confused. It's like, it needs different. someone to guide it's and It's just through. different. We I mean, want to maintain at, that difference, don't we? Look at, look at all the other vegetables on the plate. And then look at broccoli, all right? Broccoli clearly doesn't fit in with these other vegetables on the plate, right? What, what, Are you what, trying you, to say I, broccoli can't engage as like a, yeah, we, a like piece? Whoa. I'm not saying you have a separate like, plate to put the broccoli on. Exactly. So I never said anything. anything. I didn't hey, say like broccoli. Richard, like... nobody said about separating broccoli. All we're saying, broccoli just has certain genetic inclinations that exactly. we don't know what to do with. Broccoli, Maybe yeah, and, and the solution one of the is to get a separate plate and put the broccoli. <laughs> whoa, I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Richard, you're taking this like, too far. I never said I didn't like broccoli, all right? I never said I didn't want broccoli on my plate, right? I just think, like, oh, we need yeah, to pay yeah. special Rich. attention to the broccoli on the plate and, you know, keep an eye on it. And if I'm a bit jaded about the broccoli on my plate, well, the stats reflect that, okay? Richard, the way I see it is, like, we're inclusive.